good evening all welcome to this uh, important sessions that is exam going spot us not to miss which will be very useful for all the students who are appearing for theory exams and going to appear for practical exams not only in telugu states but all over india so this is the first case where you can see there is a t2 hyper intense cavitatory lesion noted in the uterus separate from the endometrial cavity so whenever along with the blood degradation products and fluid fluid level so whenever you see a cystic lesion noted in the uterus apart from the main endometrium main endometrium cavity not communicating with the endometrial cavity and with uh, abdominal pain and uh, even uh, bleeding symptoms and abdominal pain and uh, so definitely suspect uh, accessory cavitated uterine mass that is acom so what is the criteria for the diagnosis of accessory cavitatory mass so whenever you see a cavitatory mass along the uterine wall under the round ligament so generally under the round ligaments these cystic lesions will be seen there the normal uterus will be seen normal uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries will be seen sometimes there will be blood degradation products within the cystic lesion or cavitatory mass no adenomyosis will be seen in the main uterus but sometimes adenomyosis can be seen in the cavitatory mass so what is the common differential can be endometrioma or unicorn unicornate uterus hhg can differentiate acom from unicornate uterus with an obstructed rudimentary horn mri will be the classical imaging modality of choice so remember accessory cavitated uterine mass that is acom so next 50 year male complaints of severe bone pain and breathlessness here you can see there are femoral and even the tibial the metaphyseal sclerosis here you can see there are multiple cysts noted in the upper lobes along with interstitial septal thickening and also you can see there is a soft tissue infiltration noted in the perinephric spaces symmetrical perinephric spaces there is soft tissue infiltration so which is nothing but classical hairy kidney sign and similar soft tissue can be also seen along the iota which is called coated iota sign so femoral and tibial metaphyseal sclerosis cysts with interstitial septal thickening along with hairy kidney sign and coated iota sign definitely suspect erdheim chester's disease which is nothing but non langer hansel histiocytosis so if similar other uh, spotter can be kept where there will be symmetrical diaphyseal sclerosis in long bones which is called as progressive diaphyseal dysplasia or uh, carometi angelman's disease next here this is a respiratory distress uh, case where the child presented with breathlessness and even respiratory distress so here you can see there are multiple streaky lucencies noted in the lung parenchyma along the bronchovascular markings and also in the interstitium there is free air in the right hemithorax so this is a classical case of pulmonary interstitial emphysema so whenever you see multiple uh, lucencies uh, scattered in the lung parenchyma and along the interstitium and bronchovascular markings along with pneumothorax in a child with respiratory distress definitely suspect pulmonary interstitial emphysema and in this case this is pulmonary interstitial emphysema complicated with pneumothorax so other uh, complications we can remember are pneumo pneumothorax uh, pneumomediastinum even uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia and even uh, transient tachycardia of newborn and sometimes white out lungs these are the common res uh, uh, complications you have to remember in uh, respiratory distress or hallenmembrane disease next 26 year female with chronic abdominal pain irregular periods presented with altered sensory and seizures here you can see there are subtle flare hyperintensity is noted in the bilateral medial temporal lobes along the amygdala and hippocampus and the patient presented with altered sensorium but even the patient has chronic abdominal pain so we have screened the abdomen here you can see there are classical bilateral ovarian dermoids so can you remember any condition where which is associated with encephalitis features and even ovarian dermoids there is one such condition which is called as anti n methyl d aspartic acid receptor encephalitis which is nmda receptor encephalitis which is a form of autoimmune encephalitis limbic encephalitis characterized by presence of antibodies targeting nmda receptors this condition is frequently observed in young women with these symptoms and approximately 60% of cases associated with ovarian dermoids or teratomas so whenever you see a case of this autoimmune encephalitis also try to screen the abdomen to rule out ovarian dermoids and nmda receptor encephalitis so other uh, differentials you can consider are uh, this is a nmda receptor encephalitis other one is kasiker hsv encephalitis where there will be acute onset of fever and absence of basal ganglia involvement and other will be limbic encephalitis which is uh, psychiatric symptoms and associated with paraneoplastic syndromes or tumors which is classical for autoimmune or um, paraneoplastic limbic encephalitis so these are the common differentials next here you can see there is in this case uh, whole of the brain appears normal but there is a uh, asymmetrical uh, enlargement of the left occipital lobe which is uh, crossing the midline even shift of the fox to right side and there is this occipital lobe is causing impression of the impression over the underlying calvarial bone 
and also there is a shift of the fox to right side so whenever you see this case uh, this you have to suspect occipital petalia this petalia refers to anatomical description of cerebral asymmetry in which one cerebral hemisphere extends towards the other and try to create an impression of the inner surface of the skull which is a normal variant which is occipital petalia next this is other case where you can see classical destruction of you can see complete destruction of the destruction of the uh, here you can see this is destruction of wall of the jugular foramen here i will show this is destruction of the wall of the jugular foramen and even erosion of the keratico jugular spine and even this uh, there is a destruction also noted in the middle ear cavity and mastoid ear cells and also there is mass lesion extending into the external artery canal on mri you can see there is iso2 hyperintense mass lesion noted in the jugular foramen here also you can see this is the jugular and there is automastoid ear cell collection and there is intense uh, heterogeneous homogeneous enhancement noted within the mass lesion so whenever you see this type of case this is classical case of a jugular paraganglioma uh, where we can also see the moth eaten type of destruction uh, and the erosion of the keratocular jugular spine is nothing but called the help sign uh, so this is a classical case of paraganglioma or jug paraganglioma jugular paraganglioma and it can clinically present because of cranial involvement of 9 10 11 it can present as varnett syndrome if 9 10 11 and 12 are involved it is uh, collard sickett syndrome and if there is uh, also sometimes there is horner syndrome can also present and symmetric and uh, you can also remember uh, keratid body tumor or keratid paraganglioma where you can see the lyer sign here you can see this other case there are multiple paravertebral soft tissue density masses noted in the posterior mediastinum here you can see there are paravertebral soft tissue density masses in the posterior mediastinum along with the bony changes on mri you can see multiple symmetrical paravertebral soft tissue density masses typically involving the costovertebral junction which is classical case of extramedullary hematopoiesis next one oski this is which are commonly asked now as potters also in most of the universities 12 year old male patient presented with fever followed which he developed a weakness of bilateral lower limbs here you can see there is enhancement noted along the cord equina and along the conus medullaris here you can see typically there is enhancement of the anterior roots in the cord equina region so what is the diagnosis whenever you see hyperintense areas along the cord equina that is enhancement along the anterior roots gullian barre syndrome you have to suspect uh, what is the pathology? among the mr features soft face thickening and contrast enhancement of the conus medullaris and the anterior roots of the cord equina which cranial nerve is commonly involved in brain in this entity facial nerve is commonly involved if all the nerve roots are thickened and enhancing it is nothing but you can suspect aidp or cidp and also if the completely empty thecal sac and the nerve roots are completely adhered to the uh, thecal sac you can suspect arachnoiditis which are the common differential diagnosis thank you all